Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today is Tiny Tuesday Tutorial Day. I'm sorry I'm getting this up a little late in the day, but I am getting it. I hope my head stays out of the way for this video. I apologize for the taping here. My eye at the time of the video was um, not working, so I had no vision in that eye and had to work with one eye, but I'm hoping that this will work out. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to re-record the whole thing. Today, uh, we will be making two Christmas cards that are very similar, although different. The techniques are very similar. I'm going to go ahead and get all of my colors out here. And the first one we'll be using, I'm using Daniel Smith, but you could use whatever you want. I have alizarin crimson put out on my palette. I have some rich green gold and some olive green, as well as some indigo, blue, and some indanthrone blue. The indanthrone is is unnecessary. I think I end up going with indigo through the throughout anyway. And then I'm going to use some burnt umber. And those should be all the colors you will need for the video. Um, actually, I will use a little bit of lavender at the end to do some shadowing. You can use whatever shadow color you want. And I'm just going in here and I'm putting my sketch down. It's going to be very difficult for you to see, and really you don't even need a sketch. I'm just, I was doing it for you all, but then I didn't do it dark enough for you to see it. Uh, I was just putting in some branches. Above that is going to be a pine cone. So I just drew in kind of an oval shape where I wanted the pine cone to be, and then that was about it. And the rest of it is just branches, and you really can do all of that with your brush anyway, which is what I would normally do. Now to start here, uh, I'm just using my Da Vinci Maestro number no. eight brush, which is probably my favorite brush that I own. <laughs> and I'm wetting everything above the line where I'm going to have the snow kind of going down a slope. You can see where I painted that there. And I'm just dotting in some alizarin crimson around and then a little bit of my uh, olive green I believe is what I used for that, just very faintly to give a different color to the background. Now we will wait for that to dry and then we will move on to our pine cone. And for the pine cone, I'm gonna switch over to a smaller brush. You can use any size you want, really. This is probably a number four or six that I am using, but everybody's numbers are going to be a little bit different. And I'm taking some of my brown and I'm just going to dot it in to make pine cone shapes. I'm just going down the sides and up the center and putting in all of those little pine cone shapes. It's very simple to do. Only I didn't wait for mine to dry so it's going to bleed a little bit. I'm using a dryer here to dry it and now I'm going to go over it again. You don't have to do this. If you let yours dry, it should be just fine, but that's basically what it should look like. And then I take a darker brown. All I did here was add a little bit of indigo into my brown and it, again, should have not been quite so wet. So. Um, the brown didn't show up real well. I'll be going over that again. Now I'm just putting branches in here and there all over, making them kind of crooked, going in all sorts of directions. And now I'm going back in and putting that brown in now that it's not so wet, drying that all down. Now you can see what the pine cone should have looked like. <laughs> and I'm adding in some berries. There are a couple ways you could do it. You can do it like I'm doing now where I'm just painting in red circles all over the place and filling them in with color. Uh, and on the next one, I will show you how I do it using shadow, which is a little bit different technique than what I did on this card. Uh, again, I let it dry and now I'm putting in the little nubbies on the end of the berries. I made a mistake there and accidentally dotted my paper, so I added a third berry there or a second, yeah, third berry there. Now I'm going in with some gouache and I'm just dotting over my pine cone where the snow would settle into the pine cone. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Then I go over the berries, having some of the snow settling on the berries and also on the uprights of the branches. Uh, not on all of the branches, but just on the uprights where it would have stuck. And that 
is pretty much the extent of this card, except that I will be adding in some shadowing underneath, and I'm going to stamp it with some ink. I heated up my tape so that I can take the tape off, and you wanna make sure you sign your work as well. The uneven edge on the right-hand side of my card, I'm going to fix that later, and I'll be putting in the shadowing on that card later. I did not do it for uh, until I finished the other one. Okay, and now for the second card, I'm going to tape it upright so that uh, the fold is going down the left-hand side of the card. So this will be a vertical card. And, you know, I found out that when I was cutting my paper, when I got to the end of the roll of my B paper, the roll was uneven. So none of my edges were straight on my cuts, and it was very frustrating. I had to waste a lot of paper, but I'm just going to use those wasted edges as scrap. But uh, now I'm doing the same thing. I'm just putting in branches, putting in where the pine cone is going to be. And I drew in all the lines so that you all could see what I'm doing. And putting in a couple leaves on this one. And that is it. Now I'm going to go ahead and wet pretty much the entire area of the card and just letting it dribble down using the same colors I used on the previous one. Oh, on this one I do use a little of a Danthrone blue and put it underneath the pine cone and where I'm gonna be putting some blueberries. And again, dry it before you go ahead and do this portion. I think I did dry it this time, but oh, I did it right there. And now I'm adding the dark brown. Went around it again just to make it a little bit darker because it was little too pale and adding the dark brown in the bases of where the, each of those little pine cone uh, branches are in the pine cone, the little petals. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to be putting snow over it anyway. This is just a quick and easy way to do a pine cone. If you're going to do a realistic pine cone, I suggest you draw in each little leaflet, but on this you don't have to do that. And I also used more of a brown color on the branches on this one. The other one was more of a brown gray. I mixed my, my brown and my indigo together to make it more grayed down. And now here I'm putting in some berries and I'm gonna show you how I do them a different way now I'm switching over here. I'm removing some color on top because I decided I wanted a little more shadowing on this card. But I will show you how I'm going to do the rest of the berries. I will only put in... Oh, I guess I don't do it yet. I'm only going to put in the bottom portion of the berry. There, I started it. Where I just put the paint on the bottom, then I wet my brush with water only and I drag it around the top and it draws that color up into the top portion and it adds more shadowing on the card. Now I'm going to grab a thin script liner to put some veins in on my leaf, but I felt like they came in a little bit too dark. Maybe not. No, it wasn't on this card, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> so that's what I did there. And on those, I just used that lighter green, and then I added some blue to it in order to deepen the green. I didn't have to grab any different greens for that. And you can stop anywhere you like with these branches. I just decided I wanted to thin them down even more and make them a little more scraggly, so that's what I did, and I decided to add a couple more berries. But... Then I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the snow, and that's pretty much it for these cards, you guys. They were so simple to do. Uh, I will show you the shadowing. There's no shadowing that I did on this one because this doesn't have really any ground hanging underneath it, but on the other one, I did put the shadowing. I added snow sprinkles on this one, and I did not add it to the other one. I got I got uh, ink all over my hands there, too. So I had to clean off my brush and my, my little sprayer thing that I use for my snow. Here I was just adding on a little, or I was removing some of the white dots and then adding some bigger dots on the other areas of the car, like, card, like on the leaf and stuff. I'm going to sign that. 
And now I'm gonna put on the sentiment on the bottom of that one. I just needed to find one that fit. I think that one says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a ch son is given. Um, and then on that one now, I'm putting some lavender underneath at the branches, and that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this Tiny Tuesday tutorial, please don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you're not subscribed. I try to get a Tiny Tuesday tutorial out every week. Sometimes I have to skip a week. Um, but subscribe so that you don't miss any and hit that notification bell and you'll be notified of all of my upcoming videos. And in the meantime, remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you, and God bless you all. My Christmas video is coming up very soon. I'm going to try to get it out before Thanksgiving Day if I can get it edited in time. It was a lot of stuff to go through. Bye, everybody. Stay safe.